Let's talk about the AC end of things on this because that's really what uh, most of the money on this unit is spent for is to have the AC capability versus DC. Uh, to be honest, most welders out there don't weld that much better or worse on DC, but AC is a huge difference. So we're on the main screen right now. You can tell we're in TIG mode. We're in DC because of the depiction of the DC current. We're going to go under process. We're going to switch this to AC TIG. We're going to hit the button. Now we're in AC TIG and we can adjust it here and we can also adjust everything from the home page. We'll go through here. So trigger is the same as what it was on DC. That's how you start and initiate in, uh, the arc. Pulse. Pulse is a little bit different on this. So, and I'll switch it on so we can look at that better. There we go. You no longer have a different waveform capability for pulse on AC, which you really don't need because your AC balance is running in triangle or square or soft square, so that doesn't matter. So you just have a much simpler pulse function on aluminum. I personally don't pulse aluminum. A lot of people don't either. That's up to you to decide if you want to do that. So anyways, we'll just turn that off and then we'll keep going. So we have AC waveform and tungsten. Now tungsten, I already went through that in the previous section, so that's not really a big deal. You already understand that. Let's hit, hit AC wave. So there is a lot of settings in here. I'm going to cover somewhat of an overview on what they do so hopefully you understand more. I will probably shoot a video explaining it more in depth so you have an even better idea but for right now we're just going to kind of briefly cover that. So AC frequency which is the first option right now it's at 200 hertz. Um, it's adjustable between 20 and I believe 4 or 500 hertz. If you look over here the blue section of that kind of shows you where the average settings would be. I personally use 60, 120, 150, and 200 hertz for welding aluminum. I don't really weld anywhere outside of that, and that's kind of well within the range of what they would consider a normal parameter. Um, as you go lower in frequency, the arc gets wider, and I find that on thicker aluminum, you're going to get more penetration. So if you were to run, uh, say, I don't know, 3 16 aluminum at 210 amps, which is what this machine puts out, at 200 hertz, your penetration will be less than at 60 hertz. So if you're welding anything thicker, go at lower frequency. If you're welding thinner stuff, like box tube or something, uh, 120 to 200 hertz will help out a little bit. It kind of chokes the arc down where your weld pool is a little bit narrower and it's a little bit more focused. So for like fillet welds or inside corners on aluminum, running a little bit higher frequency gives you a tighter arc spread. So anyways, that's AC frequency. We'll leave it at the 200 hertz. We'll go back. AC balance, which AC balance, pretty much any TIG welder that welds aluminum needs to have AC balance control. The point of it is, is that on AC, the old transformer machines were pretty much stuck at 50-50 balance. So that's 50% DC electrode negative and 50% DC electrode positive. And the reason they were stuck at that is because that's what the wall outlet had. It's 50-50 balance. Well, when they invented welders that could adjust the AC balance, what people found was when you run 70 to 75 percent balance, which that's referring to DCEN, so the negative side is more than the positive side, you get more penetration on aluminum and less cleaning action. What you'll find is if you run 50-50, like this machine can go to 50%, so this would be like a way old school transformer machine. At 50%, you're gonna find that that tungsten you have isn't gonna hold a point and will almost liquefy, and it's gonna be very hard to weld with it at higher amperage without going to at least an eighth inch tungsten, if not bigger. 
So 50%, even though you can adjust it, uh, you're never going to need that much cleaning action. It's kind of almost pointless, to be honest. Now, even lower, I'm sure that this machine has a ball function. Yeah, there it is. So what ball is, is that it just puts so much cleaning action, so so much DCEP into the tungsten that it just balls because it can't handle the heat. That feature is really handy because most people, myself included, uh, I weld with a ball uh, on anything thicker than about an eighth inch for, for aluminum. It just seems to give a better arc consistency with the a mini ball on the end. That just makes it a lot easier to do that. So let's go up here. On the flip side, you can go all the way to 99%. I do use 90-10, I call it, which is 90% DCEN, 10% cleaning, so DCEP. I use that for welding aluminum bronze. It gives a better finish to the aluminum bronze. It, it looks cleaner, it's more visually appealing, and it just seems to wet out better. So I will use 90-10 on that, but never on aluminum. And as you can see, the little blue bar there pretty much the middle of it is 70 to 75 percent so that's where you're going to be and that's the case for all welders not just this one so that takes care of ac valence let's go back so the ac waveform essentially what you're looking at here is how the ac waveform works so it cycles between positive and negative on DC, you just run straight DC EN. AC, you cycle between the both of them. Now, the waveform being adjustable, you have square wave, which is basically an instantaneous ramp up, ramp down, ramp up. You can do a soft square wave where it kind of clips the edge off, which the peak time here, here, and here is slightly less. I've heard that that makes less audible noise. So if you're sensitive to the sound that the AC square wave makes, that may help you, or you could wear earplugs, of course. You have sine wave, which this 100% identical uh, wave pattern to the older transformer machine. So if you ran a transformer all your life, this would help you out because it's basically the same thing. This also does triangle wave. A lot of the higher end TIG welders out there do that as well. I'm not a huge fan of triangle wave, but I don't weld that much thin aluminum anyway, so it's not a huge deal. But I have heard that on real thin aluminum, that seems to be beneficial. And you can see the dwell time at peak is basically non-existent. It's instant and then off. So you're only at that peak point of the highest amperage for a very short time. All right, let's go back here. We're going to enable, and actually, this is a great picture. So the blue line represents zero amperage, and you can see it's balanced. So we'll call this the EP, the positive side. We'll call this the negative. So if you have this machine set at 100 amps AC, you're going to have 100 amps here and 100 amps here, and it's going to cycle between positive and negative. This machine is one of a handful of them. Um, the only other ones, I believe, are Fronius that you can, and uh, ESOP does it too now, I think of it, um, that you can adjust the amplitude separate, which is pretty interesting, and I'll show you that. Now, this shows the zero amperage line changing, but what really is going on is if you only want, say, 50 amps on the DCEP cleaning side and, say, 100 amps on the penetration side, this allows you to do that. So you can control your heat input in a different manner. The best way I can describe this in, in very simple terms is that with aluminum, because of the oxide on the surface, you have to break that up in order to get a solid weld that's free of light contaminants. Ideally, you only want the as least cleaning as possible because cleaning 
reduces your penetration. The more amperage and the more time you spend on cleaning action, the less the penetration is. So by being able to tailor your, your amperages separate on the waveform, you essentially can more or less fine tune that AC cleaning action to where it's only the minimum that you want. So reduced heat, heat input is uh, gonna be effective of it as well as possibly deeper penetration if you up the amperage on the DC end and limit it on, um, on the EP end. So hopefully that makes sense for you. So we're gonna enable that and that opens up this whole next set. Um, I didn't mention earlier, so this machine, I believe Fronius can do this. Um, HTP's Invertig, I don't believe can, but that you can change waveforms, but not in the manner that this does. I believe Fronius is the only other machine that can do this. So what this is, is and I'll select it. Um, you can select between square, soft square, sine wave and triangle wave, all independently on both the EN side of the AC waveform and the EP, your cleaning end. So to make it even simpler, I'll come back here to the advanced AC and I'll just disable it. So essentially this depicts square wave on both. You could actually run square wave on the EP and then come down to triangle wave on the EN to reduce heat input or reduce penetration or just again, tailor the art to get what you want out of it. How much that really makes a difference I'm going to have to experiment a lot with that. I've never owned a welder that had that kind of feature, so I'm going to have to play around with it. I know the theory behind it. I think it could come in handy for certain situations. Is it necessary? No, but again, you're buying a pretty high-end machine here, so they're going to put that feature in there. I don't see myself using it that much, but it's there, and definitely I will experiment with it. So again, that's so you can adjust each waveform. Now this, um, we'll scroll down. So this is referring to adjusting um, the EN versus EP amperage. So say the machine's set at uh, 150 amps. We can put to where it's at 150 amps on the EN side, and then we could put the EP, the cleaning, down to say 70 or 100 amps if you wanted. And that's what I was talking about with the advanced AC. It basically allows you to split your amperages on the waveform to where you only put as much heat as you need to get the proper cleaning action. That's something you'll have to experiment with if you have this feature. Um, very few welders actually can do that. Like I was saying earlier, Invertig 221 by uh, uh, HTP can. A few ESOBs can, Fronius can, um, but beyond that, I mean, your cheaper TIG welders definitely are not going to have that capability. And that's called uh, DC independent amplitude adjustment. The nice thing is, so that is built into this machine. The previous Dynasty 210, you actually had to buy a expansion card for like some ridiculous, like $500 to unlock that on the machine. This one has that unlocked, built-in, no card needed. So that's kind of nice. Now this commutation, and I'm gonna click that. I looked at this and I haven't really played with it. If you look here, so it says, provides an aggressive, focused, more audible arc. That's how it's standard is set up. When you go to low, it says less aggressive, uh, softer, less audible. If you look at the waveform, all it's doing is essentially clipping the corners and kind of doing like almost a sine wave. Now, the only real benefit to that over like soft square wave is just maybe a slightly quieter. I don't find an AC TIG arc that bad anyways, so I don't really know why that would be an issue, but maybe for you, you can't stand the sound of it even with earplugs in and you just don't want to listen to it. So that's appears to be what you're doing here is just clipping the corner so the noise output will likely change. So let's go back here. 
and that pretty much takes care of all the AC features of this machine. Um, again, the tungsten is the same as what it is on DC and so is most of the other stuff. So we wanna say weld, just hit out of here and we're right back. So the TIG torch shows we're on TIG. You got the waveform of the AC, so we know that we're on AC. And then that is your base amperage. And in the case of AC, this does go to 210, same as DC. And let's see what the bottom is. In this mode, it may only, based on tungsten selection, it may only go down to say 20 amps or 10, we'll see. Oh, yeah, 10. This machine will weld down uh, to one or two, amp two amps on AC, I believe, but you would have to select a smaller tungsten in order to be able to go that low because at say two, three amps, I doubt a 332 tungsten would even stay lit. I think it, the arc would go out on its own. It's just such a small amount of power. Um, but yeah, you, you can adjust all those settings we were just in right from the home screen or when you're under the mode selection.